Prior to the mid-nineteenth century, what was accepted in mainstream art was strictly paintings of academic and historical nature. Paintings were to be illusionary windows to a grand scene. Since these works of art were to be illusions and almost replicas of a scene, the techniques used to paint them had to eliminate any traces of brushstrokes so as to not show the viewer that this was painted by a human, but as a frozen scene in time. The artist, with strict content and technique regulations on him, was thus emotionally separated from the work. However, modern era hit society with its industrial revolutions, middle class formations, and theories on human existence, and changed the relationship between the artist and his work from that point on. What we see by the mid-19th century is an explosion of new avant-garde art characterized by its highly abstract and expressionistic qualities. What the modern era gave the artist was the ability to express individuality. For the first time, the artist's experiences, expressions, and thoughts molded the content and form and eventually became the art itself. The modern era has truly been defined by the freedom of individuality. The connection between the individual artist and his or her own art became apparent through Impressionist and Post-Impressionist works. Artists began depicting scenes as how they experienced it. Their unique interpretations of light and color and movement had started to become the focus of the piece. The artist's interpretations and expressions were now becoming the art. This is relevant in Monet's Haystacks, where he records a fleeting moment only he witnessed and experienced. He did so with incredible hue modeling. So too did Seurat express his unique emotional and subconscious understanding of a scene. Seurat's expressions were unique enough to create a new technique called pointillism. The importance of the artist in the modern era increased as time went by. Content and form was increasingly being defined by individual style and expression. Picasso's style is unmistakable in The Ladies of Avignon. Even classic content such as the portrait evolved into an emotional and expression-filled piece. Rather than focus on the sitter's status, the paintings reveal the subconscious expressions held by the artist. The way in which Alfred Luce was painted shows the nervous and challenged psychological state of artist Oskar Kokoschka. Lucian Freud placed emphasis on the skin of his own figure. His own expressive techniques depict a raw and fragile stance on humanity. Individual styles, theories, and expressions evolved and crossed mediums. Frank Lloyd Wright's Roby House is a clear example of a highly customized design to fit the personality of the individual and to satisfy Wright's own design aesthetic. As time went by, the importance of the individual grew. Abstract expressionism focused on the artist's emotions and actions and used that as content. The artist was becoming more and more a part of the art. Individualism in art hit a peak when the individual became the piece of art. Mundane human actions and Capro's happenings were to be captured as art. Cindy Sherman placed herself into film stills to reflect her thoughts on gender roles, and Gilbert and George became their own singing statues. In all of these works, the individual has control over content by way of expression and manipulation of materials. As time went by, the individual came to be the important factor in art, creating a direct connection between human expression, art, and its audience. We see this as a window to the mind and soul, an expression of deep inner thought and belief. To express what we feel most passionate about ultimately helps us achieve satisfaction and happiness in our own skin and within our own minds.